CBS 4's Ted Scouten is live in Las Vegas to begin our team coverage. And Ted, you have some new information about the investigation. Yeah, Rick and Ruta Bay law officers here in Las Vegas, as well as all over Nevada, have spent the day trying to learn as much as they can about the man suspected of pulling off the largest shooting in U.S. history. Uh, there's the Mandalay Bay. That's where those 32 rounds rang out from last night here on the southern end of the Las Vegas Strip. What police learned is that he owned several homes in Nevada. They went to visit each of them today and that he bought many firearms legally. Country music star Jason Aldean was on stage when the firing began shortly after 10 o'clock local time, but it took a full 20 seconds for people to realize this was not fireworks. Then came chaos, the sound of automatic weapon fire mixed with pandemonium. Calls flooded 911. Got shots fired. There's many people down. The shooter paused several times, once for nearly a minute, presumably to reload. Gail Davis held on to a police officer for dear life. And then we thought, okay, it's over, it's over. And then it would start again. Everyone said hit the floor. So everyone was just like literally laying on top of each other, trying to get out of the way. And the, the shots just kept coming, and so we were going down, and when we got down, there was a man that was shot right there. They were trying to take him out. He was all bloody, and he was unconscious. We need your truck. We just need to get people over to the hospital, okay? Okay, we can't worry about victims. We need to stop the shooter before we have more victims. Anybody have eyes on on this on the shooter? We're taking uh, gunfire. It's going right over our heads. There's debris coming over our heads. So we're been down here with a bunch of civilians. Be advised, we are taking fire from a very high floor. There, every officer that comes up is going to be a target if they're driving on Las Vegas Boulevard because it's coming from the Mandalay Bay on the Boulevard side. The shooter, later identified by police as 64-year-old Stephen Paddock, was in fact firing from 400 yards away, four football fields away, through two windows, 32 stories up. When it all ended, those who had come for a night of fun were left clinging to each other and to life. I've never been that scared in my life, in my life ever. Concert goers who were not injured became first responders, moving victims in wheelbarrows, office chairs, and hotel luggage carts. Tom McIntosh was shot in the leg when a stranger stopped the bleeding and drove him to the emergency room in the back of a truck. Trauma surgeon Jay Coates said more than 100 gunshot victims poured into University Medical Center. These patients with so many coming in so fast, uh, we did what, what's called damage control, which is really just stopping the process of dying. Move on to the next one. Got the next one in, and we did that all night. And a live look again at the Mandalay Bay here in the southern end of the Las Vegas Strip. When police got into that room, they found an arsenal in there up on the 32nd floor. They found that he had 23 firearms inside of the room. When they went to his house in Mesquite, just outside of Las Vegas, they found 19 firearms there, as well as explosives and thousands of rounds of ammo. The big question tonight, though, is why police still do not have a motive. Live in Las Vegas, Ted Scouten, CBS 4 News Tonight. Ted, you've been there now on the ground. What is the mood like there? Well, as you said, a, a somber mood. You don't see all the activity going on in this part of the strip here. Um, part of the strip here is closed. You can only go uh, up to a certain point, and then they have part of it blocked off. There's still a lot of police activity uh, up there by the hotel and by that field where that music festival is taking place. CBS 4's Ted Scouten reporting live in Las Vegas. Ted, thank you very much.